Melanie Perkins is the CEO of a company called Canva. It's a Sydney-based startup that's building an online design platform. And Melanie, one of the most critical moments of your journey was meeting a Silicon Valley investor at a conference in Perth, Australia, which is clear literally on the other side, the far side of Australia from here. <laughs> First you fly into Sydney and then you still have another five-hour flight to, to Perth. And I wanted to, to, for you to tell us about this moment that you had with Bill Tai, who's an angel investor and works with uh, Charles River Venture Partners. Yeah, sure. So back in 2010, we were in this competition. It was Inventor of the Year, and we were runner-up the year before. And we were back at this lunch, and I happened to have this five-minute conversation with an investor. And at the time, I did, even though we'd had a company for like three years beforehand, I knew absolutely nothing about venture capital. I hadn't even heard the term startup. We were just a small company that couldn't get a couldn't get a bank loan because we had no credit history. And you um, you actually bootstrapped your other company, which yeah, exactly. is an online yearbook making company. So yeah. students could go online and make a yearbook, use your online tools. Yeah, exactly. So we had no funding before. In fact, we didn't even know funding was a thing. Um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's amazing. And um, then we met, had this five-minute conversation and with Bill and he really opened our eyes to what was possible. He was talking about companies that we'd heard of and companies that, tech companies that you'd heard of don't tend to, didn't get created by people that we knew. It was like they were being created on another planet. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, really, literally, it wasn't something that I didn't even believe was possible to happen. And then we were, I was chatting to Bill and it seemed like, you know, he actually had personal connections with these people and it really opened our eyes to what was possible. And we exchanged contact details. He actually sent me a list of sites that I had to check out. And then I decided a few months later to go and uh, he said, um, if you come to San Francisco, let's meet up. And so I was like, okay, that's awesome. This guy is an investor. He's got really great connections and he wants to actually have a meeting with me. But it's funny because what he told me is that here is this just great, young, amazingly smart, beautiful woman that, you know, seemed to have a great idea, but just, you know, like every other entrepreneur out there, he loves advising, you know, startups, but a lot of them, he doesn't, they, they just never really follow up. And, Knock, knock, knock. Here comes Melanie. <laughs> I'm coming to San Francisco. <laughs> you show us a little glimmer of sunshine. We're going to get away through it. <laughs> so, yes, I went to San Francisco. I had planned to go there for two weeks. And on the very first day, I had a meeting with Bill Plant. And so for him, it actually was like nothing. It was like he had a meeting with another entrepreneur, I'm sure. But for me, this was like weeks of planning months of, of getting prepared like this was the vision that we'd had for years beforehand and so literally like the days leading up to it nerves were like crazy but eventually I got myself to this meeting with Bill so we went to Sil we went down to um, Palo Alto to University Ave and we were meeting at a cafe there and I had read on Wikipedia that the dress code in Silicon Valley is quite casual and so I decided rather than wearing my full pants the combination, I was going to really turn it down and just go in a normal dress with a suit, jump, suit top. So I got there and the very first thing Bill said to me was, you didn't need to get so dressed up. <laughs> I was crushed. <laughs> and then we sat down. So we ordered some food. I was obviously completely not hungry as I was nervous as hell. <laughs> And I had a pitch deck of my plan for the future of design. And so whilst trying to eat, I was trying on to... On paper, by the way, on paper. On, on little bits of paper that we printed off in our digital printing presses that we had previously at my mother's house in the living room, surrounded by staff. It was, it was very funny. <laughs> it wasn't all laid out on an iPad or anything like they do now. No, he, he said, do I have an iPad? And that, that was another... <laughs> I left the meeting feeling under checked and overdressed. That was a very fascinating experience. So I'm there trying to eat my lunch, 
trying to show, switch between these pages of my pitch deck and trying to mimic his body language. I studied a bit of psychology at school. And <laughs> it said that if you mimic someone's body language, it increases liking. And I really wanted him to like me. <laughs> it was the most disastrous experience. I was just beside myself with nerves. But what made it worse was he was on his phone the whole time. He was barely, it appeared, paying attention to what I was saying. And so I went home and I was just feeling like I was oh, the no. biggest flop in the world. I felt like that was my one opportunity to actually get into this world that I wanted to get into so desperately. And what actually happened when I got home to my inbox was it was filled with introductions. What he was wow. actually doing there when we were sitting was introducing me to a bunch of people in his network. And then he sent me another email and it was typed so casually with his left hand, presumably, with his uncapitalized words, mispronunciation, and bad grammar. <laughs> All he actually said <laughs> was, if I could find a tech team, he'd be excited to invest in my company. And one of those texts that he sent out, one of those intros was, lo and behold, to so, your future tech team. Exactly. So he had introduced me to Lars Rasmussen, who founded Google Maps. Huge and, intro. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> and Lars um, has now become an advisor and an investor, and he has just been amazing alongside Bill. But he also introduced me to a guy by the name of Cameron Adams. And Cameron happened to be an amazing UI UX developer and has now actually become a co-founder at Canva. And another one of our team members, Dave Herndon, he was introduced to us by Lars as well, who actually was a senior developer at Google. And so it was incredible that this meeting that I felt like had gone so badly ended up having such a huge impact and um, it really has transformed our journey with Canva.